Hello, today we are going to learn about landscapes. Landscapes have three different parts to them. You have your foreground, middle ground, and background. Do you think you can identify the three parts of a landscape in this landscape? We have a pretty outdoor mountain scene with some flowers and a nice sky and clouds in the sky. It's pretty obvious where the foreground, middle ground, and background are. So let's review it. We have three parts to our landscape and we have the foreground where the flowers are. These are the closest to us, which makes them the foreground. You could also say that maybe part of the river is part of the foreground because it is pretty close. But as you can see, the flowers would be the closest to us if we were the ones taking this picture. I wish I was there right now. It's very pretty here. Now, the middle ground could be a lot of different things. I would say that it is mostly the river and the grass and even back to the trees. Kind of the whole middle section of the, the picture, which makes sense. It's a little bit further back, but it isn't the furthest into the distance. And it's usually where the horizon line is. Finally, we have our background, which is the sky, which is very typical of a landscape. But I would also include the mountains in our background because they're set back in the distance. So usually when things are really far away, you can't see the details as well. You can see the details of the flowers a lot better than you can see the details in the mountain or even the trees or the clouds. So think about that when you're going to make your own landscape. We are going to be making underwater landscapes next. So they're a little bit different than this one here and it should be really fun. Okay, now we're going to draw our Finding Nemo inspired underwater landscape. So I'm starting by drawing some plants, kind of looks like an anemone, <laughs> and then a little clownfish, and I'm adding my mid-ground with some more underwater plants, and some coral reef rocks, and some seaweed, and some more plants. I didn't put too much in my foreground, more in the midground, I would say. I'm going to add a little starfish there just to put a little bit more there in the shell. Just some more plants. You can look at the instructions to see more ideas of things you could add. And in the background, I put kind of big rocks, almost like the canyon that Nemo has to go through. Now I'm going to color everything in. I'm using colored pencils. You can use crayon, or if you're doing it on Seesaw, of course you can use the Seesaw coloring tools. I'm trying to make the things in the foreground really bright so they pop out and look like they're close. And then more neutral colors in the middle to make the midground. You still see a lot of details there, but you don't want it to be brighter necessarily than the front. This little plant thing. All these little corals kind of look like little underwater cacti. I'm color in my seaweed. That's pretty bright, but you still know that it's further back because it's even behind some of the coral on the rocks there. And then I'm coloring in my very back rocks. I sped this video up so it'd be quicker, but the whole drawing should only take you about 15 minutes or so. Really simple. Coloring in my sand. And then I chose to use watercolor to paint my background and because it's an underwater scene, but you can just use your crayons, whatever works. I used it to make my background a little bit darker because as we know, there are less details in the back. So if they're a little darker, it's harder to see. And there you have it. My finished underwater landscape. You can put anything in yours. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine. This is just an idea for you.